Welcome to this Wise Owl DAX for Power BI tutorial. In this video, we're going to explain various ways of counting values and rows in DAX. We'll start with a quick look at the basic count function for counting the values in a column, and then explain why you need to use a different function to count Boolean values. We'll explain how blanks influence the result of a count, and how you can use a count rows function to avoid problems caused by blanks. We'll show you how you can count the unique values in a column, and then to finish the video, how you count the results of an expression. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a new blank report, and as usual, the first thing we'll do is import some data from an Excel workbook. We'll use a workbook called Movies, and as usual, I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download this file yourself. There are just two tables in this workbook at the moment, so it's a slightly simplified version of the model we've been working with for previous parts of the series. So there's a movies worksheet, which contains all the data we're going to work with, and then there's a blank all measures worksheet, which will just save us a little bit of time having to create that table ourselves once we've loaded all the data. So there we go, all the information's been imported, and we're ready to start creating some measures. DAX has several functions for counting things, and we'll start by looking at the simplest one of those called count, which allows you to count the values in a column. So let's right click the all measures table and choose to create a new measure. And I'm going to call this first one count IDs. So we'll count the values in the ID column of the movies table. I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on and change the name of the measure to count IDs. We'll make this equal to the result of the count function. And you can see in the tooltip that this function requests a reference to a column name. So we'll refer to the movies ID column and then close the round brackets. Now the count function allows you to count values of several different data types. Here we're counting numbers in the ID column, but you can also count text or dates as well. So I'm just going to copy this measure and then create two more using the exact same pattern. We'll count the titles in the title column and then also the release dates. So I'll add another new measure to the table and then paste in the code I've just copied. We'll call this first one count titles and then change the column name to title. We'll then create one final measure for the moment. We'll call this one count dates. Paste in the same code, change the name, and then change the column that we're referencing to release date. Okay, so once we've created those three measures, I'm going to create a table visual on the report so we can see what's going on. So let's insert a table from the visualizations panel I'll add in the genre field so we can group our data a little and then add in the count of IDs, count of titles and count of dates. Just do a tiny bit of formatting. Let's increase the, uh, the size of the table first so we can see what's going on. And then we'll also use the format pane to bump up the font size a little bit. Let's go up to, let's say, 13 or so. So that's a bit easier to read. And um, now that I've created my measures, I can get rid of the delete this column column. So we can right click on that and choose to delete it from the model. Confirm that we want to do that. And that will make the table into a measures table. And there you can see that the count function returns the same results, whether you're counting numbers or text or dates. There is one type of data that the count function can't deal with, and that's Boolean or true false values. Now the movies table doesn't contain any true false values at the moment. So let's start by heading into the data view and then we'll add a new calculated column to the movies table, which will tell us whether a film is an Oscar winner or not. So I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call this one is winner. And then I'm simply going to write a logical test which says Oscar wins greater than zero. So that statement can either be true or it can be false when I hit enter we'll see a list of true false values appearing in that column and the data type will be set to true false. Now let's try to count the values in that column in a new measure. If we head back to the report view and then right click the all measures table, choose to create a new measure. I'll call this one something like count true false equals and then count. And then the column name I'll reference is called is winner. If I close the round brackets and press enter, that's fine. But as soon as I try to add that measure to a visual in the report, we'll find that the visual is broken. 
If I click the see details button, we'll get a fairly simple message saying the function count cannot work with values of type Boolean. If we did want to do this, then there's a separate function which allows us to count Boolean values. And the function name is count a. The count a function does exactly the same as the count function. It just also includes the ability to count true false values. So if I create my measure with a count a function, we'll see once again the exact same list of results using the count a function instead. Both the count and the count a functions will only count the number of values in a column. If there's any row which contains a blank, that won't be included in the count. To demonstrate that, let's count the number of budgets for our movies. I'm going to add another new measure to the measures table. We'll call this one count budgets and make it equal to, we could use either of the two functions here. We could use count or count a. As I know the budget column is a numeric column rather than a Boolean column, I'm going to use the count function. I can refer to the budget, close around brackets and hit enter. And if I insert this into the table, you can easily compare the results of the count of budget with the count of the other columns, which all contain values on each row. Just to demonstrate that the count a function will do the same thing, if I change the count to count a, we'll see that the end result is identical, so both count and count a ignore blanks. If you're trying to count the number of rows in a table and you want to avoid the potential to accidentally miscount those rows by counting a column which contains blanks, you can use a different function to do that called count rows. As the name suggests, the count rows function counts the number of rows in a table rather than the number of values in a column. And as an added bonus, it works more efficiently than count or count a. So let's right click the all measures table and choose to create a new measure. We'll call this one count films or count movies. And we'll make this one equal to the count rows function. Now you'll see this time the tooltip requests a reference to a table rather than a single column in a table. So we only have one table we can count, it's called movies. We can close around brackets and hit enter. And we'll see if we add that to our table visual that it has the same result as the count of IDs, titles and dates and the true false values as well. So it's telling us there that none of the um, ID, title, date or true false column contain any blanks. We could also use the count of rows versus the count of budgets to work out how many budgets have been populated. So let's create another new measure quickly. If we add a new measure, we'll call this one percentage of uh, completed budgets or percentage of uh, filled in budgets, something along those lines. And we can simply make this equal to the result of the divide function. And I'm going to divide the count of budgets by the count of films. We can close around brackets and hit enter. I'll just apply the percentage formatting to that new measure. And then we can add that into our table and we'll see which genres have been fully populated with budgets and which ones are missing some. DAX also contains functions which count the unique values in a column. I know that in my movies database there are multiple films with the same title and I'd like to just count the unique titles that exist. To do that let's add a new measure to the all measures table and I'll call this one count unique titles and then we can make this one equal to the distinct count function. If we open the round brackets again, we can see we want a reference to a column name. So in this case, I'll go with the movie's title. We'll close the round brackets and then hit enter. And then we can insert this into our table visual. I'll just drop this next to the count of titles to make it a bit easier to compare. And we'll see if we get rid of the, uh, the formula bar that we can now see the list of unique titles or the count of unique titles for each genre and in total. The distinct count function considers blank to be a unique value, but there is another function which allows you to exclude blanks from the count. To demonstrate that, let's try to count the unique values in the budget column. I'm just going to go back and copy and paste the previous measure we've just created, paste that into a new measure, and then change its name so that it's called count unique 
budgets. We know the budget column contains blanks. So we'll change the column reference there to budget as well. And then enter that measure. And then let's add it into the table. In fact, let's tidy up the table a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of the percentage of filled in, the count of films. I'll keep the count of budgets, but we'll get rid of count true false, count dates. We'll keep the titles and the unique titles as well. Get rid of count of IDs. OK, so we can get the, uh, the count of unique budgets and drop that next door to the count of budgets. So once again, you should see that we've got a diff definite difference between the counts for all values and unique values. Now what I'd like to do is count the unique budgets, but exclude any blanks in those rows. So I'm going to once again copy and paste the previous measure. So count unique budgets. Create another new measure. Paste in all the code I've just copied. Count unique budgets, not blank. And then use the function called distinct count not blank or no blank. So yeah, clever name. It does exactly what it says it does. It counts the unique values, but excludes blanks. So I can enter that measure and then we can drop that into our table visual. And we should see a slight difference between some of the genres. And again, you should see that one single value has been discounted from the total unique count. Next, let's look at how we can count the results of a calculation. So let's say, for example, we wanted to work out the profit for each film by subtracting the budget from the box office and then count the number of results we've returned. One way we could do that is by creating a calculated column in the movies table first. In fact, just to demonstrate what we would get from that calculation, let's head into the data view and add a new column and then simply call this one profit and subtract the, the budget from the box office. So we'll say profit equals box office minus budget. So we'll see when we enter that formula that we get a result for the various different rows. Um, so we'll see the values of the profit column there. If I just quickly scroll down to the bottom of this table, we'll see that we also have a lot of blanks. So there are many films which are missing both a budget and a box office. And when both those values are blank, the result of the expression is also a blank. If we have at least one of those two values, we will get a result. Now we could create a measure which counts the profit column using either count or count A. But all this is a bit unnecessary because if we don't care about the actual value of the profit, we just want to see how many profits we get, we can circumvent this calculated column by using the count X function. While I'm here, I'm just going to copy the movies box office minus movies budget expression. And then I'm going to delete that column from my table completely. Then we'll head back to the report view when that's been deleted. And then we'll create a new measure to do this in one single step. So let's add a new measure to the measures table. And I'm going to say uh, count of profits or count profits equals. And then I can't use either count or count A because those functions only accept a reference to a column name. If I want to count the result of an expression, then I need to use either count X when I want to count the results of numeric, text or date expressions, or count AX if I want to count the result of Boolean expressions. For this one, we'll count X. We're going to get a numeric result from the expression. We can then open some round brackets. And the first thing we need to specify is which table we're evaluating this expression for the rows of. So we want to calculate this expression box office minus budget for each row of the movies table. So I'll say movies followed by a comma, and then I can paste in the expression I've just copied box office minus budget. If I then close the round brackets and hit enter, we can then add the count of profits field or measure into the table visual so we can see how many rows return an actual sensible result for that expression. The expression you write in a count x function can be more elaborate than the basic arithmetic we've just used. To demonstrate that, I want to modify the count profits column. At the moment, it's essentially telling us how many rows there are where either the budget or the box office has been filled in. 
So you'll remember we only receive a blank if both budget and box office are empty. I want to change that so that I'm only counting the profits where both budget and box office have been filled in. So to do that, let's start by heading back to the count profits measure. And I'm just going to copy all of the code from there and then create another new measure and then paste all of that code in. I'll change the name of the measure to the inventive count profits two. And then after I've referenced the movies table, I'm going to create an if function. And for the first argument of the if function, the logical test, I want to check if either box office or budget are blank. To do that, I'm going to use the is blank function, which you may remember from a previous video. So if is blank movies box office, I'm then going to remove the minus symbol and replace it with a double vertical bar, which is the same as the or operator, is blank, and then movies budget. So if either of those two conditions are true, I want my if function to return a blank. So I'll enter a comma at the end of the logical test and then refer to the blank function to return a blank value. So we know already that the count x function won't count blanks. Otherwise, if both box office and budget have been filled in, I want to return a value that will be counted. Now it doesn't really matter what that value is, anything at all will do. I'm just going to enter a zero and it's simply going to count the number of zero values when both box office and budget are filled in. I'll then close around brackets for the if function. And what we've basically done here is created a rudimentary count if function. Uh, this is not the best way to do this in DAX. There are far more efficient, far easier to write versions of this that we'll see in later videos using the calculate function, the filter function, and the calculate table functions. But just for now, just to demonstrate that it works, let's enter that expression. And then we can add this measure to our table. And we should see that we've got a slight difference now between the count profits and count profits too. So this is counting the number of rows where either budget or box office have been filled in. And this is counting the number of rows where both budget and box office have been filled in. So there you go. There's the full range of ways that you can count things in DAX. Hope you found some of that useful. We'll be using some of those techniques in later videos as well. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.